down in and watch this from. I appreciate you down in for another one of our videos. Uh, this is session number nine, baptism, baptizing. Uh, we're moving right along into Acts. Now we're moving into Acts uh, chapter eight. And we've already seen, uh, you know, Stephen and Philip being introduced uh, in the previous chapters uh, in, in the last lesson where uh, Stephen uh, and Philip were, 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 were chosen to, uh, to, to kind of help and lead and help out with uh, the, kind of the deacon type work. And uh, so and that, that was one of those situations where the, 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 the apostles wanted to pick people or get them to pick the people who would help out, who were of good character, uh, full of spirit and wisdom. And uh, Stephen and Philip were, were of that. And of course, Stephen uh, gave his uh, sermon and witness and testimony before the, the Sanhedrin. And of course, he was stoned uh, for after false accusation. Philip, on the other hand, has a different encounter and that we're, we're looking at here. So, um, where Philip is, uh, you know, he, he's he's a godly man, and he's moving right along, and he's listening, and he's working for God. Okay, so that's pretty much what we we know of Philip going into this uh, lesson here. Question for you: The meaning, what meaning does baptism have in your life, other than baptism? In what ways do you publicly identify with Christ? It's a very good question. A lot of people that uh, you know sometimes get baptized and make a profession of faith, and then you don't hear anything else from them, and you really have nothing to, to uh, tragically to point to saying that they are Christian. A lot of people get baptized and sit in church, and that's that's the end of their story, uh, tragically. Uh, but you know, at the same time, I try to if uh, you know I've been baptized. Uh, early '90s, way back in the day, it's been a while. Uh, I, but at the same time, I try, I strive to uh, stay close to God, stay close to His Word, and uh, I try to live those principles and try to live those uh, those teachings that Christ has, has, has shown us. Uh, it doesn't always come through, obviously, because that'd be more of a poor reflection on me and my sin than uh, anything else. It has nothing to do with God. It has everything to do with my approach. But again, you can answer that question for yourself. So, okay, we're going to move on into the section. Like I said, this is baptizing. Uh, and so we understand the context with that. So, uh, But we're going to move along to uh, chapter 8, 26, 29. An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, Get up and go south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road. So he got up and went. There was an Ethiopian man, an eunuch, and high official of uh, of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. I had to think about that. Candace is such a more of a modern name, but it is a, a, a an ancient name as well. Who was in charge of her uh, entire treasury? He had come to worship in Jerusalem and was sitting in his chariot on his way home, re uh, reading the prophet Isaiah aloud. The spirit told Philip, "Go and jo join that chariot." So. Okay, so what we're seeing here is, uh, you know, uh, the thing that jumps out to me, obviously, is Philip is told to go somewhere and he doesn't ask questions. He gets up and goes. A lot like Abraham, right? Just get up and do what the Lord's telling you to do. There wasn't a question of what, can it wait till tomorrow morning? Can it wait till I'm done here? Can it wait for this? Can it wait for that? No. The, this is the early church and the Holy Spirit is deep among the disciples and deep among the people. OK, so Philip, uh, being a godly man, good reputation and good, full of wisdom and full of spirit. When God told him to move, he moved. He didn't ask for question. He, he knew where he had to go. Get up, go south to a road that goes down to Jerusalem, Gaza. So if he was told to get up, that may have meant um, could be anything. He could have been lying down, could have been sitting down, could have been eating, uh, could have been waking up in the morning time. Who knows? But God's. At that particular time, God told him and he obeyed. He got up and left. So he went. Now there's the Ethiopian man. He, of course, obviously is in charge of the entire treasury. That's a very high position to be in. Uh, this, this kind of reminds us a little bit of Joseph, does it not? Where Joseph kind of worked his way up to a very high position with the Pharaoh's court. So here you have this, uh, this eunuch who, who's coming in. He came to Jerusalem to worship. And now he's on his way home and he's sitting there and he's reading out loud. And 
And keep in mind that we're reading out loud is not anything uh, unusual. Uh, people in the uh, uh, in the in the past read aloud a lot of times because the uh, oral uh, vocation of the of the reading helps uh, people permanently remember what is being written. And of course, if he has got uh, he's reading from the prophet Isaiah, so this is very important. Remember, he came to Jerusalem to worship. So he's a converted Jew from what we can tell, okay? So he's one of those, not Hellenized Jews, but he is uh, you know, a Gentile converted to Judaism, okay? So, uh, and he's a high-ranking official. Uh, he's coming up from Ethiopia. Now, we look at a modern map and we see it. You know, some places in the Bible call it the land of Cush, but Ethiopia, you know, we kind of get an idea where that's at. When we look at a map, we see how far south it is. Now, how far did Philip walk? We don't know. Uh, we have to assume that with this man, this eunuch, walking along or bringing his chariot along, that uh, you know he could have been a couple of days out from uh, or a day or two out from Jerusalem or, or away from the temple. He came there on a pilgrimage to worship, and now he's headed home. And he just happened to stop on the side of the road, and he's sitting in his chariot, and he's reading the book of Isaiah. Wow. <laughs> so that's pretty interesting, is it not? So, uh, you know, when we're looking at this, there's a few things that we can look at. Uh, you know, he, he worshipped, uh, but being a phys- if, if he was, he, he could have either been a physical eunuch, uh, which emasculated, uh, <laughs> I won't go further into that, but he could have been physically a eunuch or he could have been by choice a eunuch. If he's physically a eunuch, then he is barred from entering uh, the temple. He would not be able to allow. He wouldn't be able to do that because Deut- Deuteronomy twenty three one kind of spells that out. So it wouldn't been. He would not have. Been, it's impossible for him to be part of fully in, immersed and involved in the Jewish faith if he was a eunuch. So there is that barrier, that physical barrier, so to speak, if he is that. So that is something for us to think going forward. Question, how do people know when the Holy Spirit is directing them to act? Good question. How do you know when the Holy Spirit is calling you to do something? I know that in many times of my life when things go like miraculously easy, uh, then I know God's at work. (laughs) If things are uh, frustratingly hard, that's me at work. (laughs) So, And that could be anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be witnessing to someone God has plans for us all the time. If we're changing jobs, we're changing and we're, we're moving our family to another city or state, um, schools, going off to school, going off to college, all kinds of decisions that we make. If we make those decisions, uh, staying close to God and adhering to his word and following his lead, then those things are going to be very easy. Okay, And just even moving from house to house, let God take control of that. Let him lead in those decisions that we make. There's not a decision that is too big or too small that God uh, doesn't need to be a part of. He needs to be. He wants to be a part of every part of our lives. And we got to remember that. So uh, moving on, we get to uh, 830, 35. When Philip ran up to it, he heard him reading, the, ran up to the chariot. He heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. And said, do you understand what you're reading? How can I, he said, the eunuch said, unless someone guides me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the scripture passage he was reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and the lamb is silent before his shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied to him. Who will describe his generation for his life? is taken from the earth. The eunuch said to Philip, I ask you, who is the prophet saying this is about, himself or someone else? Philip proceeded to tell him the good news about Jesus Christ, beginning with that scripture. Wow. So, man, that's just pretty pretty remarkable. And I'll leave the, the Isaiah scripture where he's reading uh, on the bottom. Uh, but, you know, Philip ran up. He, he saw... He kind of, being full of spirit, he probably saw his target, his intended target, 
that God wanted him and, and ran up to him. And he saw the man sitting there and he's reading the scroll. So what does that tell us? Uh, well, there's a few things. The fact that the Ethiopian man was reading scripture tells us two things. One, uh, that he's wealthy uh, or has some money because um, you just didn't have Bibles or Torahs just everywhere. This isn't like we had Gideons. And, and I know nowadays, you know, we used to have Bibles in every hotel, but that's... Uh, rapidly changing is it not however you can anytime someone wants a, a free copy of the bible there's plenty of organizations and churches that will give you a copy of the bible now back then uh the wealthy uh, are the ones that had the, these copies i mean this was just wasn't something for everyone so uh, it was very important for those priests who's, who had the scriptures to to be able to interpret them correctly right uh, and a lot of times that wasn't the case. But so the, the people themselves just could not afford to just go out and buy a, a Bible or buy a Torah or, or a scroll or something like that. They were expensive because people had to handwrite every single one of those. So with this fact that this man was able to have a scroll tells us that he did have a little bit of money. Being uh, uh, responsible for the entire treasury, the Queen of Sheba, uh, he would have money. He'd be very wealthy. The other thing that we're looking at is he would be very educated. He'd be an educated man. So he's sitting there. Uh, you know, he probably, uh, you know, the fact that he was able to read ancient Hebrew, reading because at that time, uh, the scrolls of uh, the Torah and the prophets and all that were written in he Hebrew. They were not translated to another um, language at this time. So the man was very educated. He was educated and he was rich. So we know these two things about the, the eunuch. And so he's having a, a hard time understanding, you know, what was going on, right? He, he was trying to figure this out. Who is this prophet talking about? Is he talking about himself or is he talking about somebody else? Who would do this? Who is being whipped and scoured and remain silent in front of his accusers? So obviously, He's reading passages that direct point went to the cross. So, uh, and, and so Philip proceeds to tell him the good news beginning with that scripture. And time and time again, we talk about this, that the, Jesus did not come to break law or change anything. He came to fulfill God's law. He came to fulfill those prophecies and he has done that. So it was very easy for Philip, knowing full of spirit and full of the uh, being a disciple of the disciples, the apostles, it was kind of obvious that he knew where to start and what this was all about. Imagine if you're Philip and you come across somebody, God told you to go down there, go down this dirty road and talk to someone because I got someone for you to meet. And you get down there, they're talking about a subject that is near and dear to your heart. Bam. You know, Philip was probably, uh, I would say that Philip, in my personal opinion, when he proceeded to, I, I, Philip was probably so happy, so glad, so uh, in awe of God's plans here, okay? Because he come across someone who is thirsty for the water of life. I mean, it's, no, there's no simple, no easier way to put it. And I think that we got to sometimes look at that as well. There's plenty of people out there who are very thirsty, for what God has to offer them through the cross. And we got to remember that. A lot of people don't know it. A lot of people are searching, and they're searching all in the wrong places. I was one of them. So, question, why do you think people still turn to the Bible for answers to life questions? Well, it's kind of obvious. That's where people continue to go there because that's the truth. There's a standard there that we need to go by, and we deviate from that standard. We try to change it or we rebel against it. We invite problems into our lives, do we not? The Bible is the authority, the foundation that we build our society on. God's Word is good for us. It's not good just for people living in the desert. It's not good just for the Jewish people. It's good for everyone that follows His Word. Question, why is it important that, uh, to point to the Bible when sharing someone about Jesus Christ? Well, I mean, how else are you going to talk to people about Jesus Christ? What faith, what, what, what examples do you have outside of the Bible? The Bible's it. The Bible is everything that Jesus said. There's nothing said any, anywhere else. Jesus didn't speak to any other denomination, any other religion. This is it. This is, only, this is the only way to, 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 to salvation. It's through that cross. And that cross 
is there in the New Testament. So it's very important for us to be aware of what's written in the Old Testament. Is it not? And the Bible overall is very important to us. When I tell people that, you know, God is talking about Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, I need to be prepared for that. They're like, what are you talking about? Well, there's plenty of places in the uh, Old Testament that point to the cross. You start with the Psalms. David does. Okay. I mean, and of course, you look at Isaiah, you look at Daniel, you look at all these places. There's plenty of times. Even Job at one time points in his desire, his longing. He's talking about the tree that will not bend. So when we look at these kind of things. It's very important for us, not only for us to be close to God and be close in our own walk, but also to show people what we believe and what this is all about. It's very important. This is, you know, this is not a gospel according to Aaron. <laughs> this is a gospel uh, that is important to me because I did not write it. <laughs> it's, it's, it works for me because it's a truth that I need in my life. And that's what we need to portray to those around us. Okay, moving on. Chapters, uh, we're going to move on to 36, 39, still in 8. As they were traveling down the road, they came to some water. So obviously, Philip has been talking to this guy, and he's been pondering and thinking. And, and, and know the, we can only assume that you know, he's, trying to, he's connecting dots, and the, the Scripture is coming alive. When, when Philip's able to connect the dots and show him that prophe prophecy from Isaiah pointed to the cross. So they're traveling down the road, they come upon some water. The eunuch said, look, there's water. What would keep me from being baptized? Oh, wow. So he ordered the chariot to stop, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he was baptized. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch would see him any longer, but went on his way rejoicing. Wow. Wow, there's a lot going on here. As always, when there's a chance for salvation, don't ever put it off. <laughs> if you don't know Jesus Christ, and you've been struggling, and you've been searching for answers, and you just tell yourself you're not too sure, get sure. Get with someone and talk about your concerns, but don't tarry, don't wait. Get that blessing. If God is calling you, don't, don't deny that. Don't deny yourself that. Reach out and grab his hand and, 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 and accept Jesus in your life. You, you need that. If God's working on you, it's important that you do. The eunuch here was like, I, I want this done. <laughs> now, the baptism, as we all know, is a, is a outward expression of our inward salvation, okay? When you get baptized, the old self is being lowered into the water like going into the grave, and raising up out of the water is the new you that is now a Christian, okay? That doesn't make you better. It doesn't make you perfect. Uh, it, it, it saves you because you're telling the world that I believe in Jesus Christ, and He is my Lord and Savior, so doing that is a testament on your behalf and the faith and the, the, the life-changing faith that's happened in your life. So when we do that, it's very important. It's a good testimony. The eunuch wanted to do that, and look, they went down into the water, and he was baptized, and then they came, rose up out of the water. So again, we have the symbolism of going down and coming up, do we not? Now the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. He probably vanished and real quick like he was gone. His work was done. Now there's no telling how far down the road they travel. Remember now, this guy's heading home. So he's on a dirt road heading south. And no matter how far they probably went, they could have went a day or two. Who knows? I'm sure that this uh, eunuch had a lot of questions. Okay, he had a lot of questions and he was probably just saying, Philip, answer me this, answer me this, answer me this. So we don't know how long this transition took place from the moment Philip saw the chariot, uh, saw, saw the eunuch sitting out on the chariot to the moment that God removed Philip from the situation. Philip was not going to Ethiopia. God had other plans for him and we'll read about that later on. But God had a plan for the eunuch. The eunuch, on the other hand, he was rejoicing. He would go home. He was saved, okay? Chances are he'd go home, and he was probably going to talk to his family, uh, friends, 
and uh, co-workers, all of them, and he would be a witness, so much like Joseph was in the Pharaoh's court. Now, there's nothing to, to say anything beyond this point, but I believe that if you're saved in such a manner that you would see such miracles, it'd be hard for you to shut up. <laughs> so, uh, and that's what I feel is the case here with this man. Um, he embraced Judaism, and now he's a convert to Christianity. Uh, so this is, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, as far as the early church goes, uh, Ethiopia was part of that, um, part of the fringes of the world, the edge of the world, so to speak. They did not know that the world was round. Uh, the, their world was everywhere that they lived, and beyond that was pretty much oceans and deserts, and that's it. So they didn't really know anything beyond their borders. So this is kind of the first time that uh, one of the disciples got outside of Jerusalem and actually saved someone, okay? Now, uh, while this man was, uh, you know, embraced Judaism, he was first recorded, he was not, he was the first recorded uh, Christian convert who lived under, uh, outside Palestine at that time. Uh, the first recorded a record of a Gentile accepting Christ was Cornelius, the Roman century, uh, led to faith by Peter in Acts 10. So right now we're seeing uh, Jews and the converted Jews being saved. We, we haven't seen a Gentile saved yet. And like I said, that's going to be what Cornelius will be known for. So again, you know, this man got, he didn't tarry, he didn't wait. As soon as he found water, he was like, let's, let's do this, Philip. He didn't want to wait any longer, did he? He didn't want to wait until he got home. Uh, and of course, when he was baptized, I mean, the way I look at it, this man's uh, soul and salvation, he was sealed and he was in God's hands. And uh, Philip was spirited away because God said, I got other things for you. I don't want you going all the way to Ethiopia. Uh, I, I want you to go this way because we got work to do. So uh, question, what makes baptism a pivotal moment in a person's life? Well, I think we've already addressed that. Baptism is an outward expression of the salvation that's taken place inside of you. This is the lowering of your sinful old ways and the raising of the new you in Christ. It's very pivotal. Uh, that It's an outward expression. Now, uh, baptism does not save you. The act of salvation, except in Jesus Christ as your Savior, that saves you. Baptism is a way of telling the world, look, this is me now. I am saved. So, um, yeah, <laughs> very important. Summarize, believers should know the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is always tugging at us one way or another. We've got to be ready for that. We've got to be prepared for that. And most importantly, we've got to wait for that. Believers should use the Bible to point others to Jesus Christ. Amen. When you, uh, If I were to ask you, hey, pull out your Bible and let's see what uh, you would point to me. You know, you, where in Romans do you know where to go? Where in the Bible can you use, for instance, go to Daniel? And that's a challenge to people. You know, and how much of the Bible do you know, if, especially in the Old Testament, and that points to the cross? Something to think about. Something that some of us old, uh, older Christians probably need to brush up on because it's been a while since we had to do those studies. Uh, believers demonstrate their faith in Jesus through the act of baptism. Amen. It's an act of baptism. It's a demonstration of our faith. It doesn't mean that we're going to be saved. It's a demonstration. It is a witness to others. Uh, at our church here at Webb, we had two men that were baptized this morning. I tell you right now, there's no, there's no greater blessing than to see someone express their faith. It just isn't. When we have to mop the floors of people being baptized, that is a calling. That is a... Uh, a part of servitude that I do not uh, don't don't take for it's not something that uh, I hate. I enjoy that. I look forward to that. I want to see more people get baptized. I want to be able to mop floors every Sunday if that's what needs to needs to happen because that just shows me that people are being be, uh, accepting Jesus Christ and they're being saved all the time, and that is just a wonderful thing for people and for us as a church to see. So hopefully. Uh, you'll see it where you're at. Uh, and again, if you, you may be in a situation where people are asking about salvation and they may not come to you saying, hey, tell me about Jesus Christ. That's not what they probably do. They'll come to you because they're in pain. They'll come to you because they're suffering in one way or another, either in life or uh, 
uh, some kind of addiction or family members or problems at work, problems with finances. There's a lot of problems that people come to you every day or they speak to you about. People going through divorces, uh, kids having some problems at home, kids having problems at school. All of these things can lead you to an opportunity to talk to people so they can find that comfort uh, in Jesus Christ, and the comfort in the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, again, let the Holy Spirit lead you in this manner, but be prepared. And that uh, being prepared comes from studying His Word. Okay, thank you for watching as always. I appreciate your time uh, this week. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe to the video. That way, every time we post a video, you'll be notified when those videos post and you can watch them at your leisure. At leisure excuse me. Uh, we'd love to have you here as our honored guest here at Web Baptist. You're welcome to come in and worship with us on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. We'd love to have you here for Bible study and for a sermon or Sunday school classes where we come in and study God's Word. If you can't make it to Web Baptist, by all means, get involved in a Bible-based church wherever you're at and find out what it is God wants you to do. You may be the man sitting on the chariot, or you may be Philip walking along the way and you see someone on a chariot, okay? And what I mean by that, those circumstances, you just never know, but you need to be ready for that. Get plugged into your church and find out what blessings and what God has in store for you. I guarantee you, you will not want to go back. Once you wrap yourself around uh, God's family, uh, your blessings will continue to flow. I guarantee it. Okay? Until next time, take care and God bless.